Hey everyone, it's me again. Let's go shopping again. Maybe this time we can find more than one book like we did in our Llewellyn video. Uh, now we are at Crossed Crow Books this time. Um, I like this publisher, they're new. Um, but what I like about them is that they have really fun covers. They sell a lot of books that were previously only available as paperbacks from other publishers as hardcovers. And I love that. I love hardcover books. And you never get hardcover books, especially in magic books. So that's exciting. Um, so yeah, I really like them. But let's go ahead and jump over to the shop. And what is this? Hmm. Hang on, I have to see what this is. What is this? Oh, it's like blogs. Cool. Didn't know that that was there. Anywho, let's look at the available titles. And yeah, all. Let's see. That's interesting. Um, oh my gosh. Pat Patricia Telesco. Um, that makes me feel very nostalgic in the same way that books like, uh, actually by like Raven Grimasi and... Uh, Silver Raven Wolf and DJ Conway, all these like early 2000s, mid to late 90s uh, magical authors. That that's very, very nostalgic. Um, let's see, that looks nice. Um, this does look really cool. Like, come on, that's great. It has great buzzwords here. That's nice. Let's see. Oh, more Patricia Telesco. I'm so glad her stuff is getting re-released. Because I do think she makes... She wrote some really good stuff. And I mean, I, she might still be writing. I'm not sure. Actually, now that I come to think of that. Hey, that's my name. Let's see. Aw, oh, see? I'm so happy for her. Ooh, love that. Hmm a pre-order. Dang, it's so far away. Ooh, love that. What's going on here? Oh, geez, that sounds sad. Defying shadows for witches and pagans battling cancer and chronic illness. Ooh. Oh, Patricia Telesco. Let's look at this. Let's see. The Confessions of Fiona. Uh, let's see. In 1893, the Scottish writer and mystic William Sharp started to write under the name Fiona MacLeod. MacLeod. MacLeod? MacLeod. Why can't I pronounce? Anyway. The name Fiona did not exist before then, at least not in our world. For the following 12 years, Fiona wrote profusely on her own tradition, the mythology and deities that the fairies recognize. None of these myths, legends, gods, or goddesses were known to humans prior to Fiona's revelations. Love that... I am working on a book that is very similar of that vein, so about, well, I don't want to disclose anything yet, so just, yay. <laughs> um, Steve, let's see, Blamires or Blamires? Hmm. Presents these concepts in his new book, The Confessions of Fiona. He studied the fairy tradition for 30 years, blah, 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 that's cool. So fairy stuff. Cool, cool, cool. That's exciting. So it literally is someone's personal gnosis, you know, turned into a magical path for others, not just themselves. That's exciting. That that would be really interesting to read. I have to admit. That's, let's see, 114 next year? That is really interesting. Oh, I love any time we can get some of the more like nefarious <laughs> uh fey creatures in the spotlight i'm all for it uh as you you might not know um i don't think i've ever made a video on it but i work with goblins in my practice quite heavily like quite heavily it's funny i starting out on my uh youtube journey i feel like i shared so much of my personal practice and i feel like i don't anymore i guess i should again Advanced Witchcraft, Patricia Telesco. Hmm. I don't know if I've ever read that by her. Let's see. 
Uh, adventure questions, count their schedule, blah, 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 2025. Dang, that is so far. Okay. For those who... A deeper look, blah, 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 blah. That makes me think of the Advanced Witchcraft book by... Um, uh, oh my gosh. An author that I really like. and I just forgot her name. Oh my gosh. There's also an Advanced Wicca book too, which is good. But oh my gosh, I just forgot her name. I'm so sad. Anywho. I've read books like that before, but I bet that one is good. This looks intriguing. Ensouling the Effigy. Look at this artwork, you guys. Interesting. Oh, Ford by Matt. <laughs> Let's see. Why am I looking so far ahead at pre-orders? <clears throat> Unlock the mysteries of poppet magic and fetish crafting with Ensouling the Effigy. Mm-hmm. Spirit Vessel, Spirit Conjuration. This book is not just a manual, it's an invitation to journey into the heart of animism, where the witch and spirits are inseparable. Love that. Love that. Okay. Um, that is also interesting. Hmm. Love this cover. Legends, Tales, and Parables, a witch's book of terribles. By Wick, that's an interesting name, Malloway. For all witches, or for the witches and all of us, the tales in this collection will serve you well. Each enchanting story contained within a witch's book of terribles offers a lesson rooted in the art of witchcraft that a walker of any path will be sure to learn from. While witches have long been the, uh, the impetus of fairy tales for ages, it is now their turn to sit at the heart of the matter. Whether it is a fable of the time... Oh, I just said... T First of all, that's the word timid, not time. Also, I just said time. Sometimes my southern accent gets really strong um, when I'm kind of using my speaking voice right now. Um, if you don't know, I, I don't actually necessarily talk like this in my day-to-day -day life. This is kind of like a, a speaking voice that I have that makes it easier for you to understand me. Because otherwise, my... If I let me see if I could try. If I if I talked really relaxed, I think it would be more difficult for y'all to understand me. But I do think that it might be more enjoyable for some of you to hear me talk like this, <laughs> which is more this is more comfortable and I'm more like how I sound. But I know that some people have a hard time uh, understanding the southern accent, so I do try to correct it, like I am right now. See what I did there. I guess that's the definition of code switching almost, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I try to enunciate when I'm making a video. Let's see. Uh, I mean, that seems okay, but the more I read it, the more I was like, mm, maybe not. Ooh, to catch a fleeting shadow. Oh, another Malloway. Interesting. Blake Malloway. Uh, let's see. The witch's fetch is often found to manifest within the framework of old witch lore. Hmm. Seeks to bridge the gap between myth and lore and authentic magical practice. Uh, da, 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 da. Encourages readers to explore the relationship with their own fetch. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Woo. Guys, my allergies have been killing me. The seasons are definitely getting ready to change where I'm at. I can feel it. <clears throat> the kind of craft. Hmm. A hermetic manual. Uh. I focus on the devil. Da, da, da. Here we find the devil being as vital to the craft as St. Peter. It's oh, interesting. Uh, Lucifer is as crucial as God himself. Blah, 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 blah. You know what's interesting to me? The huge resurgence just in the past five years, like very quickly, has what is now being called tradcraft, 
uh, and sometimes folkloric craft. Uh, this idea of like, let's take the sometimes Luciferian, sometimes satanic, because there is a difference. But it's like let's take these these almost like puritanical views of witchcraft and make them manifest. Uh, that's interesting to me because that for so long has been very taboo and now it seems to be the norm in our community and I find that fascinating that evolution it's like the the like Wicca itself has been really like put below in the community and Tradcraft has risen to the top it's it's fascinating to me to be able to to, to be here long enough to observe that change you know and I, I wonder where we're going to go from there. It's really interesting. What is this? Necrobotany. Hmm. Necrobotanists. Interesting. Necrobotany. I've never heard those terms put together. That's interesting. Plants of death. Funerary flowers. The art of decay and compost. That's really interesting. Hmm. Necrobotany will leave you ready to break earth on your own necro garden. That's really... Huh. Okay. Hallowed ground. The folklore of churches and churchyards. Hmm. Oh, this is interesting. The craft of Tubal Cain. At least I think I'm saying that correctly. Huh. During the chaotic but colorful 1960s, witchcraft was reborn as a modern mystical practice. Many are familiar with Wicca. Blah, 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 blah. Um, but there was a... Oh, you guys, I was just talking about this. This is literally what I was just talking about. Okay, so let me start over and read this for you. During the chaotic but colorful 1960s, witchcraft was reborn as a modern mystical practice. Many are familiar with Wicca, founded by Gerald Gardner, but there was a countercurrent, known now as traditional witchcraft, or tradcraft, which saw the art form from a very different angle. Its chief thinker was Robert Cochrane, who envisioned witchcraft as a Gnostic quest for ultimate knowledge and union with the divine. This is fascinating! This volume explores his most important ideas, especially the way in which he re-envisioned ancient mythology, putting a new spin on old deities as well as on folkloric figures like Robin Hood and King Arthur. Hmm. Interesting. Tabal, Tabal Cain, who the Bible calls the first blacksmith, blah, blah. This is very interesting. When does this come out? Hardcover is September 30th. Sweet. I'll, I'm gonna buy that. Like, I'm already sold on that. Also, by the way, in... I grew up really religious. Like, in a Christian household. And I had to take several Christian theology classes, including a book-by-book -book Bible class in university. But I can't recall this person off the top of my head. Which kind of is mind-blowing to me, because I... I feel like I know the Bible really well, but obviously not that well. Because I don't remember who that is. Let's see. Although if they're New Testament, perhaps, because I'm not, I'm more of an Old Testament person. Let's see. Mastering Candle Magic. Event Spells and Charms for Every Right. Oh, that's Patricia Telesco. Let's see. Ooh, that's interesting. A Grimoire of Fallen Angels. Love. High magic. Uh, wait, in the age of steam, a steampunk's introduction to Victorian esotericism. That's that could be exciting if they pull on actual Victorian folk practices. Let's see. Seems to only starts coming. A real cultic mad occult magic, Victorian occultism, spiritualism and theosophy to Freemasonry. Yeah, it is in the Golden Dawn. Yeah. Oh, wow. August 13th. Um, so it's out now. Uh, that's interesting. 
If you're into the Victorian era, you should definitely check that out, I suppose. The Old Craft and the New World. Stones in the Glade. Inter Did I not click it? Interesting. How can an art as old as time be applied to the modern world? Uh, the book experiences uh, explores the experiences of a practitioner from the coast of New England. It contains tips, examples, and viewpoints surrounding various uh, magical topics, including the uses of magical circles and sacred spaces, magical tools, observations of the green world, familiar spir spirits, spir almost said spirits, <laughs> spellcraft, and more. That's interesting. I mean, who doesn't like New England? Honestly. Uh, the Tameless Path. Unleashing the power of invasive plants and witchcraft. Ooh, that's cool. Oh yeah, by the way, I love this feature where they show you what the hardcover looks like if, if it has a hardcover. Um, I really like that. See, I think that's really cool. Let's see. Oh, Whispers. Have I read this? What is this? Huh. Also, this is the newest... Uh, <coughs> product coming out from Raven Digitalis. Um, I'm excited for that. I got the chance to speak personally with Raven Digitalis like recently. And he, uh, he well, are there pronouns he and him? <clears throat> anyway, they were amazing. Um, very kind. It was awesome to speak to someone that I had admired for so long. Let's see, Icelandic folk magic. This, I have seen this before. This intrigues me greatly. Uh, greatly. I know it's available in other... <coughs> Excuse me. Man, I really should have got some water. Um, I've seen this in other places, but I specifically want this cover because it's just so gorgeous. And I want a hard cover, and it's on back order. <laughs> um, I'm a, kind of obsessed with Lilith, as I think a lot of us are. I'm very excited for this. Oh, it has a warning. Warning, disturbing content not intended for minors or readers with sensitivities. This book is not for the casual reader. It contains highly sexual and violent themes throughout. Reader discretion advised. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, wow. It'll be, a, it'll be available as a hardcover. We are doing a small run of each edition. Only 150 of the hardcover. You guys! I might have to go ahead and pre-order it then, huh? That, oh my gosh. How exciting. Well, hey, that's my first thing. Wow. That is such a gorgeous cover. Um, Cauldron of Memory is a good book. I love seeing the re-releases of these older books, you know? Dance of the Sun Goddess. I love the title. I love the cover. I love what it's about. Baltic mythology, which is so ignored. Love that. Oh, what is this? Invisible fire. Traditional themes in Western mysticism and Sethian Gnosticism. <gasps> that sounds really fun. Oh, wow. Christian mystics, Gnosticism, Eastern traditions, Kabbalah. Kabbalah, really. The way of Seth. Oh, man. Love that. Do, 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 do. Oh, cool. Look at that. The Avian Oracle. Very cool. Hounding. A Tale of the Heaving Sky. Ooh. Herb stuff. Oh, more herb stuff. Be careful what you wish for. Apprentice of the Old Craft Book 2. Victorian Grimoire. Hmm, is that on the rise right now in popularity? That's interesting. Oh, that's Patricia Telesco, too. Never heard of that. Um, love this art. That name sounds familiar. Oh, you know why that name sounds familiar? Because I know someone in real life with that name. <laughs> that's funny. This is most certainly not him, though. Let's see. Awakening the Witch Blood. Cool. Wicked Magic. Oh, Deborah Lip. Yeah, I have that book. Not in that beautiful hardcover, though. Ecstatic witchcraft? Magic, philosophy, and trance in the shamanic craft? How fun! Look at that! How fun! Eye of Odin. 
Hmm. Oh, sleep and sorcery. And I was just talking about how I'm really into sleep. Hmm. Oh, that's such a good book. It's being re-released. Witchcraft on a Shoestring is a book that I bought um, literally when it came out because I was working at a bookstore. So that literally the day we put it on the shelf, I bought it. <laughs> that's funny. Oh, I love that cover. Oh, that's a number. That's another uh, Deborah Blake book, right? Yeah. Witchcraft Unchained. Exploring the history and traditions of British witchcraft. Flight of the Firebird. How exciting is that? Slavic magical wisdom. Ooh, Icelandic plant magic. Sun God and Moon Maiden. Secret World of the Holy Grail. Ooh. The Bones Fall on a Spiral. Look at the book. Oh, man. <gasps> I love that. Oh, my gosh. I love... You guys, I'm obsessed with spirals. Um, I love that. Wow. That really encapsulates my vibe. I really love that. It's a book about necromancy, too. Interesting. Um, the Black Book. I've heard about this. I am intrigued to read it. I never have. Um... It's a book of like parables that involve the devil, the witch's devil, and it's supposed to be really cool, from what I understand. The way for oh Merlin, Master of Magic. I <laughs> I have strong opinions about that book. Very strong opinions. Um, I've actually read from that book on this channel several years ago. <laughs> wow. I I can't Wow, okay. Wow. <laughs> Um, oh, this is the re-release of a long, long out-of-print book by Raven Digitalis. Uh, Shadow Magic Compendium, now being called a Witch's Shadow Magic Compendium. And it's been changed and added on to, and it's, it's really good. I, th I personally think it's Raven's best book ever written. Witchcraft and the Shamanic Journey, that sounds fun. Oh, look at the little mouse! There's like a little mouse! <gasps> you guys, okay, again... Getting into, like, what my vibe is. Obviously, Rodentia, the entire Rodentia, like, family, I consider my totem. Or my power animal, my, sh my whatever you want to call it, spirit animal. But look at this. Okay, so specifically this kind of a starburst, this almost, like, Star of Bethlehem star, is something that I'm obsessed with. You've probably seen it in the background of, like, tons of my videos. I have a bunch of these all over my magic room. So I love that. That's very cool. Travels through Middle Earth. Interesting. Oh, wow. Be careful what you wish for from cult to occult. That's, that's weird. Um, oh, and here we are at the end. Let's see, your star sign. And what is that? The Wildwood Way. Spiritual growth in the heart of nature. That's a really cute cover. I love the little tree faces. Okay, but what was this? That sounds interesting. Your cover what you wish for describes the courageous journey of a village wise woman, a witch in Cornwall, uh, Cornwall, England, as she struggled to find herself and establish her identity. From her strict religious upbringing to her trials and coming to the craft, Letitia, I'm going to say it's Letitia, um, forgive me if it's not, Letitia's story is a truly inspiring read that reminds us that perseverance and patience pays off. And is a hard reminder of how the old gods and the spirits can test and challenge us. Ain't that the truth? It's a story that explores her lifelong connection to the magical land of Cornwall, the journey that led her there, and the magical life that followed. Oh, that sounds really lovely. Doesn't anyone else think that sounds really nice? I like that. Hmm. Well, anyway. Uh, that is our journey into Crossed Crow Books. And uh, until next time, goodbye.